Hey everybody, I'm Mark, N1BED. Today we're going to be discussing the differences in line loss between two of the more common coax cables that you're going to find on the market. Uh, one is RG8X, which is a very thin cable, and the other is LMR400. And the reason why we're going to be covering this topic today is because we've had several friends of mine in the past who have asked me how they can improve their performance of their base station at their house, specifically for their 2 meter and 440 antenna systems. What we're going to show you today is what the cost is of using a lower performing cable, an actual RF output to the antenna. We're going to be doing tests at the output of the radio and at the input of the antenna at the end of a 100 foot run of both the RG8X and the LMR400. And what this is going to do is uh, not only demonstrate the uh, principle of decibel loss, but actually show you a real world example of just what the energy cost is when you use a lower performing cable. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to some very common frequencies that are used in the amateur radio world. Uh, this frequency here, 3.95, uh, it's the top of the 80 meter band, part of the uh, general privileges band. And you can see that the coax loss is 0.3 decibels. And as we switch to our two meter loss, if we wanna look at VHF, We'll go to one of our more common frequencies in VHF. I'll go up to uh, 146.52. You'll see that we have 1.7 decibels of loss, and this is per 100 feet. And then when we switch over to UHF and we go into our common frequencies, such as 446. At 446 megahertz, you see we have 3.4 decibels of line loss. We're now connected to the RG8X cable showing the coax loss at 100 feet and that loss is 0 0.7 decibels at 3.95 megahertz. As we switch over to VHF and go to 146.52 megahertz, you'll see that our line loss has increased to 3.1 decibels per 100 feet. Now as we switch to UHF and scroll to 446 megahertz, you'll see that the coax loss per 100 feet is 4 decibels. What we'll be using for test equipment today is an ICOM IC746 Pro and a Swan Whiskey Mike 3000 power meter. The power meter is on a 200 watt power scale. We are going to be testing an FM uh, just so we don't have to worry about peaks uh, from things like AM or single sideband, so it'll make it a little easier to get us some meter readings. So again, we're on 3.9 megahertz, and I'm going to go ahead and key the radio. And the 200 watt scale is the bottom scale, and you'll see that it swings all the way to 60 watts, 60 watts. So now we have moved to the opposite end of the 100 foot cable. We are actually at the antenna feed point as shown in the video. And as we look at the power meter, you'll see that our power has dropped down to about 52 watts using the bottom scale for the 200 watt scale. This actually indicates that we have probably a little closer to 0.4 dB of loss. Uh, not a significant difference or discrepancy between the two meters. Uh, however, it does illustrate very well what kind of line loss you can experience in 100 feet with something as little as 0.03 decibels of a line loss. Due to the 746 Pro not having UHF, we will be doing our two meter, 70 centimeter testing on the Yesu FTM 300D. As we switch to VHF at 146.52 megahertz, you'll see on the watt meter that we have approximately 53 watts of output coming from the radio into the radio side of the antenna cable. And as we switch to the UHF frequency 446 megahertz, 
you'll see that our output power is approximately 46 watts. Again, this is on the radio side of the antenna, the actual radio output. On the antenna side, you'll see that on VHF, 146.52 megahertz, that our output power is just about 33, 34 watts to the antenna. And as we look at UHF, at 446 megahertz, you'll see that we're just under 25 watts. We'll call this 24 watts. 24 watts with the LMR400 going into the antenna. As we switch the SWR meter to the antenna side of the 100 foot run of coax cable, you'll see that the RG8X and the 0.7 decibels of line loss have led us to drop from 60 watts of power at one end of the cable to 51, possibly 52 watts at the antenna side of the cable. So real power going into the antenna is about 51 or 52 watts with a 60 watt output at the radio. As we switch to the antenna side of the RG8X cable, you'll see that after a 100 foot run, our actual power going into the antenna is about 21, maybe 22 watts at 146.52 megahertz. And when we switch to UHF 446 megahertz, you'll see that we have an astonishing 15 watts going into the antenna. Just to recap, when we compare LMR400 to RG8X, we can clearly see that as we move up in frequency, the losses are more and more significant, uh, both in decibels, as well as with regard to our power loss. The most significant being on uh, UHF 446 megahertz. We see a drastic power drop. The LMR 400, uh, we go from 46 watts to 24 watts. And with the RG8X, we drop down from 46 watts to 15 watts. Some of the benefits of RG8X include being one third the price of LMR 400. Also, RG8X is typically one third the weight of LMR 400. That can be fairly significant when we're dealing with hanging antennas from a portable mast or if we're stringing up a dipole between a couple of trees. Also, RG8X is significantly more flexible because it's thinner, which makes it easier to run in the house as well as in automobiles and around corners, things of that nature. Also, there is no significant loss per 100 foot on medium frequency and high frequency. Also, there's no significant loss for short runs, such as patch cables and mobile installations. RG8X does have a couple of obvious drawbacks, such as a significant loss per 100 foot on VHF frequencies and higher. And also, RG8X has a tendency to have a much looser outside braid, copper braid, for its shielding and ground. That means that it's going to be more easily impacted by RFI. Some of the benefits of LMR400 are better performance compared to RG8X on common HF, VHF, and UHF frequencies. There's near zero insertion loss for short runs such as patch cables and mobile applications. Also, LMR400 is less susceptible to RFI due to a tighter braid on the shielding on the cable. Some of the LMR400 drawbacks include it's three times the price of RG8X, it weighs three times more than RG8X, and it's not as flexible as RG8X. So how does all of this impact performance? Well, a 3 dB loss cuts your transmit power in half or your receive signal strength in half. A 6 dB loss cuts a signal to one quarter of its power. A 10 dB loss cuts it to one tenth of its power, and so on. To translate that into usable information, we'll give you a quick review of some things that you may have learned while you were studying for your exams. You may recall that you have to quadruple your power in order to impact a receiver by one S unit. What this means is, if you are running 5 watts and a receiver is receiving your signal and it has two S units on the receive side, if you want your signal to be strong enough to go up to three S units on the receive side, you would have to increase your power to 20 watts. Well, the same principle applies when you're dealing with losses. If you divide your power by four, then the signal on the received end will be reduced by one S unit. So looking at our real world examples today, if we start off with a base of 46 watts 
and we divide that by four, that gets us to 11.5 watts, and that'll lower our receive signal strength by one S unit. Because our real-world application was at about 15 watts, we would lose approximately one S-unit of receive on the receive side. A loss of one S-unit in and of itself doesn't seem like a big deal. However, it can be a significant impact. If you have high-line loss on your end, which would lead to a one S-unit drop, and the receiving station is also using coax cable, that would lead to an additional one S-unit of line loss. Now you have a collective two S units of line loss in the communications path. This can be fairly dramatic when you're working on the very edge of your range. Because you're losing two S units, you may actually not be able to talk to each other versus if you had those two S units working in your favor, the receiving station may actually receive your signal two S units. I hope this helps your understanding of line loss and how it relates to being able to communicate and improve your communications capability. My best wishes to you in setting up your station. 73.